fake questions, real answers, stuff I want to talk about, but I don't want to wait for you to ask me the question. Dear Colin, the Packers have moved Devontae Adams to the Raiders for draft picks. What do you think Aaron Rodgers is thinking? Well, good question, and I don't know. As I've said many times, I never try to get into Aaron Rodgers' head. It's murky. But I'll say this. When Dak Prescott signed that contract, an A contract for a B-plus quarterback, you will pay a price. You can kick that shit down the road. You'll pay a price. You're seeing it now. Cedric Wilson, gone. Amari Cooper, gone. Right tackle Lyle Collins, gone. Aaron Rodgers, oh, he got all that guaranteed money. He got $50 million a year. He's still a 13.5% cap hit. Don't win Super Bowls in this league if your quarterback's over a 12% cap hit unless you're Tom Brady. And Aaron's not Tom Brady. You pay a quarterback $50 million, regardless of all the guarantees. This, everything in a salary cap league, even with star quarterbacks, is a value proposition. If you want to be the highest paid blank in the National Football League, eventually your franchise will have to make cuts. Aaron has always been about Aaron. He's not about winning. He'd like to win. It's more fun to win. He has always put Aaron and money ahead of everything else. Dear Colin, Baker Mayfield, you sort of called it, didn't you? I don't like to brag, but yeah, Colin, you nailed it. Tell us how you knew. Well, I figure if you're talked about as a first or second round talent as a quarterback, that I'm not going to argue that with most GMs. So what I really look for is maturity. And I think there are certain jobs that demand that 23 and 24-year-olds are as mature as 42 or 43-year-olds, like a young surgeon or a young pilot or a young quarterback. Baker Mayfield, if you looked at his history, was going to struggle with several of the key asks as an NFL quarterback. Could he be the face of the franchise? Could he show emotional discipline? It wasn't hard. He'd grabbed his junk multiple times before his first NFL start. During pregame, he whizzed a football by an opponent's head. It's not like we didn't have video evidence. And then you were going to make him rich and he was going to line it all upright. Baker and Johnny Manziel. You kind of got that cocky Texas attitude, both very talented, neither with the emotional maturity to be a franchise quarterback in their early 20s. I think Baker's talented, but even now at 27 years old, too much ego, not enough humility, that, not just his talent, has always doomed his success. Pilots, surgeons, quarterbacks. It's unfair but I need you at 23 years old to be as mature as a 43-year-old. Dear Colin, why did the Rams sign Allen Robinson, a really good receiver, when they already have such a loaded receiving core? Well, let's be honest. Sometimes keep away is an important game. The Seahawks, Niners, and Arizona could all use a number two receiver. Is that 10 to 15 to 20% why they went and got really talented Allen Robinson? Also, I talked to Les Snead. I was on a walk two years ago. We talked about this. He said perimeter talent was getting harder and harder to find on the defensive side. He told me a story about how it's hard to get even a second elite corner, but the explosion of wide receiver talent out of college allows you to have three or four really high-end receivers. So this is a mismatch signing for the Rams. Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, Robert Woods, OBJ, Van Jefferson. He's taking advantage of a cultural reality. There is more wide receiver talent than ever, 
and less cornerback talent than ever. He's simply creating matchup issues. He talked to me about this fairly privately several years ago, but now they've won a Super Bowl, I feel I can tell you the story. Dear Colin, I want to ask you a non-football question. Why haven't you discussed college basketball much? Don't you realize it's March Madness? Well, I did tell you this week in a podcast, beware of the Big Ten. They will be over-selected. And sure enough, Iowa's already been bounced. The fake ID of college basketball and college football, the Hawkeyes are done. College basketball has become horse racing in tennis shoes. It's not a sport, it's a bet. The reality is Coach K and Roy Williams could have stuck around. Why? The sport is simply too transactional. The one-and-done culture is killing it. Ask yourself, if you worked at a company and every year to two years there was 100% turnover with coworkers, would it be a good company? Even Hollywood realized this. The movie industry, about 10 years ago, started making more and more sequels. Why? Because audiences want familiarity. Familiar themes, plots, actors, and characters. College basketball right now is a really, really bad business. It's a bet more than it is a sport. And at that, it's a three-week sport. College football is a five-month sport. That's the difference. I'm not anti-college sports. I'm anti-college basketball. It's a lousy business. It's essentially a cheap roadside motel. Nobody really lives there. Everybody just stays the night. And the only channels you can get are True TV and TBS. Okay, our friends at Manscaped, the global leader in below-the-waist hygiene, are turning men's shower dreams into your favorite routine with the all-new Ultra Premium Collection. A lot here. All-in-one skin and hair care bundle, two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, the body wash with aloe vera, they have the Manscaped Aluminum Free Deodorant. I use that. Absolutely love it. They have the Manscaped Lip Balm. I use that daily if you have dry skin or tattoos. Also the Lawnmower 4.0, waterproof. So electric trimmer, go to those private parts, get it all worked out. Manscaped.com, code Colin. Free shipping, 20% off. Manscaped.com. The code is C-O-L-I-N. I love the deodorant, the lip balm, two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. All money, baby. Dear Colin, once again this week, Los Angeles goes out and signs several stars. The Dodgers just went out and signed perennial all-star Freddie Freeman. The Rams go out and sign Allen Robinson, what do you make of these massive star signings by Los Angeles? Well, think right now, if you will, about New York. That's the epicenter, right, in America. If I said, give me your top five sports stars, Kevin Durant, Jacob deGrom, Aaron Judge, Max Scherzer, Kyrie Irving, that's it. Think about Los Angeles. Just on the Rams, Matt Stafford, Aaron Donald, OBJ. Jalen Ramsey, Cooper Cup. On the Chargers, Justin Herbert, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa. On the Lakers, LeBron, AD, say what you want about his game, Westbrook. Clippers, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Dodgers, Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger, Freddie Freeman, Clayton Kershaw. Angels, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. Why? Two reasons. About 10 years ago, Silicon Valley, based in California, started creating a reality with the California economy. It started pulling away from the two other biggest domestic economies, Texas and New York State. Literally, the YouTubes and the Googles are now buying shopping malls in California, making them headquarters. Silicon Valley, we know California has been the fifth biggest economy in the world for a while. But during the pandemic, because while the rest of the country's economy was shrinking, many of the companies California has, Zoom and Netflix, DocuSign, were flourishing during the pandemic. 
the lock-in. So the economy created a $75 billion surplus for California during the pandemic. And a recent study shows that seven of the 10 richest cities in the country are in California. And the economy in the last year has pulled away even further from Texas and New York State. What does this mean? It means specifically Los Angeles. The LA owners are richer. Their arenas are worth more. Their land is worth more. Their businesses are worth more. And they're cash rich. Remember, the wealth of an owner matters more, especially with guaranteed signings. The Rams, for instance, have a very generous owner, Stan Kroenke, and a very wealthy owner. I think he's first or second richest owner in the NFL. He's got a lot of cash. That cash is not equal team to team. Some owners year to year, because they missed a budget, pull back. Kroenke does not. His California businesses, his holdings, are doing exceedingly well in this state, as everything has exploded. So if you're an athlete, as we've also had something else simultaneously occur, that sports and entertainment have never been more intertwined. Production companies for athletes, music, movie, podcast studios for athletes, exploding in California, specifically in Los Angeles. So what you see happening is if a pro athlete can choose New York or California, better weather, both are highly taxed, entertainment here, Silicon Valley money here. California, simply the owners and the teams right now are cash rich and will throw the biggest money at the best players. Dear Colin, you work for Fox. What do you think of Joe Buck leaving and going to ESPN? Well, I'm one of the few fortunate sportscasters in America that's had the privilege to work for both. They have different sensibilities, clearly two different cultures. ESPN is a massive, too big in my opinion, business. Fox feels more like family. Joe had been part of the family for what, 25 years? He wanted something new. The reality is he could go to ESPN, get a bit of a raise, actually a big raise, and not have to do baseball. As you age, what do they say? Work smarter, not harder? Maybe Joe Buck just wanted to do football, spend more time with his kids. Joe's got a young family. I never hold mobility against anybody. I like Joe. I know Joe. He certainly put his time in at Fox. I hold no grudges. I don't think the company does. Thankfully, we have an incredibly deep bench, and I think he's going to have a great run off in the sunset with ESPN. He's been all class to me. I wish him well.